just in case I have to get out of here, I should probably get some of the bigger... Because we have a hard cutoff today because I have a live stream of a Starlink launch tonight. Uh, or today, I guess. But there's... <laughs> There's, yeah, I'm like, tonight? And <laughs> like, Tim, that's in eight hours. What are you worried about? <laughs> but there's one thing I, I wanted to bring up right away. Um, it is uh, not my headline thing, but this is just something fun that I wanted to share with you guys. Um, we saw uh, a good mock-up of one of the human lander uh, landings, landing systems. So the HLS system for Artemis. This is the future lunar landers. Um, Dynetics is one of three commercial contractors. So don't forget for the Artemis program when NASA's taking humans back to the moon, they're going to be using SLS and Orion to get humans to the moon uh, just into lunar orbit. But then to get from lunar orbit down to the surface of the moon, there's three, currently three different landers that are all proposed. And one of them's Dyna Dynetics with their um, Dynetics human landing system. There's um, Blue Origin with the national team, which is a kind of a collaboration with Lockheed Martin and Draper and Orbital or and, uh, and Northrop Grumman. And then, uh, and then there's of course SpaceX with their Starship, but this was the the full scale mock up for uh, for Dynetics, and it was just really cool to see. I don't know, kind of stuff you know, pen to paper or paper to I don't know. But it, what's cool <laughs> is they showed that this thing can almost act like a Sikorsky sky crane, their lander. I don't know if you guys are familiar with it. That's that weird looking like crane that has that big middle. Uh, I, I gotta find that part in the video, but it, they show that it's like almost. It's modular, and and this is just a mock-up. This is just so they can learn. Here, check this out. This is the part. So this system, they're saying, you know, eventually they could make it so, like, you could drop out the center section and then go fly and land more and more cargo and just keep landing cargo on the surface of the moon. And I just thought it was, it was really modular. This lander is looking more and more promising the more we learn about it. Um, I don't know. I was a pretty big fan of it. And it's just cool to see that it is so low to the ground. Where's the part? They even show that you could, you could have it be a rover in the middle, like a, a rover with wheels. Um, the entire thing, or it could like launch smaller rovers. The, the circle part, like the, the habitat part, could itself be its own lunar oh, okay. lander, basically. And I just thought that was a really cool idea. Looks so, like so yeah, they, they have like, I mean, maybe for the people listening, but they have like the, um, the, the thrust modules on either side of it. It's like a long thing. I call it and the there's, dachshund there's, or like the wiener dog one. <laughs> Doesn't it kind of look like that? Sure. It looks like Darth Vader's um, TIE fighter. Oh, it like does. the wings yeah, are going to come down. That's true. But yeah, so it's got that sort of middle bit, and you're saying that they could put a, a, like a habitable. Oh, there we go. Habitat in there. Oh, they, yeah. Okay, so the so center it, part, it's supposed to be module, modular, the part where the people are. So you, now you could just have a, a version that mm. just has like the, the structure almost. And then they could drop the center part on the moon and go land. So that, I think that to me is pretty genius because you could actually just start leaving habitat modules on the surface and then just reuse that lander part over and over again. Go back up to the gateway, dock with the gateway, dock with another, you know, module to land on the surface. And before you know it, you could actually have a whole lunar colony basically based on, you know, being able to connect all those parts together. You know, so these can start driving up together. If they have little wheels, drive up together, they dock potentially. And before you know it, you're increasing with every... Yeah, that's what I was wondering. With every mission, you could eventually have a bigger and bigger habitat. You know, if, imagine if all the Apollo missions still had, you know, a habitat on the surface. Um, I guess that does rely on another lander to get the humans off the, the moon. You can't just leave the habitat and have the lander go bye-bye. And you're like, wait, 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 wait. Um, <laughs> Now, now that that sort of hull that's left over from from the you know like of the modular thing pulled mm -hmm. away, like can that yeah that could that launch again and like reload and come back down or is it a one time? Oh, the, you thing? mean the actual the this part? Yeah. Yes. So that's that's fully reusable, except oh, okay. it does have some. They barely show it in these animations, but when it goes from lunar orbit down to the surface, these are basically the ascent tanks of uh -huh. propellant. Um, what we see on on camera. But on for descent, in order to get from orbit down to the surface of the moon, it has extra tanks on the sides, and they're drop tanks. So right before they touch the surface, they drop them, which I still want to know, <laughs> how do they do that without massive explosions? <laughs> like, how are you not just bombing the moon every time you're landing on it? Though? That's the one thing I want to know. I wonder if there's like about. some kind of shutoff valve that like prevents the fuel from getting out or something. I don't know. Or like they and totally the could so drain them to so. complete like to depletion a hundred percent. So they're literally just an empty tank, you know, and then drain them even of, of pressure. So that they're 
at Isn't a vacuum that when or something. Things explode and... though, like a a gas tank in a car explodes right when there's no gas in it, right? Well, it's the fumes that create the explosion. But there's oxygen in the atmosphere, so oh, gas. Right. You know, these are at least would be separated. So if they fell apart and landed on the moon, at least you know you just have a rupture of a tank, so it wouldn't Got turn it. into a, an actual explosion. And then they could just vent out all the pressure and depressurize it or something. But I don't know. I'm still <laughs> curious about that part. But the idea with the one of the big things that's different with the whole human landing system and, and Artemis is that every vehicle has elements of reusability built into it already, which will make it you know. The Apollo program, the, the landers, like I talked about in the live video that I finally got out on Sunday, the Yay. lunar landers for the, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, the lunar landers cost over a billion dollars, you know, each each mission, basically. Um, yeah. And if we're not throwing away a billion dollars, it does help make them landing on the moon a little bit cheaper. So Well, and, and that's something I've been wondering about, like from day one, when they're talking about setting up a permanent, you know, base there. But they're still landing in these in these modules that still sort of look like the Apollo lander. And I'm like, well, but if if you're just constantly leaving half of your lander there, yeah. right. I mean, the, you the can only do that thing, for so long I, before it's just a graveyard, you know? The one or thing, junk, though, junkyard. is that even the Blue Origin one, that's the one that does look very much like a lunar yeah. lander as we know it. Um, so that is, it has a, an, or, it's a three-stage rocket, actually. So there's the, uh, there's, a tug stage that gets it from lunar orbit down to a low lunar orbit, like from an elliptical lunar orbit down to a low lunar orbit. Then it undocks. Then it fires its descent stage. And that's the part that would normally get discarded on the moon. And then the ascent stage raises. Now the, the descent stage, if they land near water and have a fueling system to refuel it, they, in theory, and I don't, it would require enough Delta V here to be able to, you know, reascend and still have enough to be able to descend with a stack on top of it again. But um, I think in theory it could be fully reusable, but it relies on refueling on the moon using mm -hmm. in situ resource utilization and hydrogen, which could be could be challenging. Mm -hmm. But still, the idea of actually being able to refuel and reuse it eventually would be really big. I mean, if 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 that seems ridiculous, then you know, if if people are going like, well, that seems really really hard. Like, don't forget, Starship in order to land on the moon has to refuel in space like ten times per mission or something. Like, it's did you so, see the moon you know, or Mars? Moon, it has Starship's to landing on the moon. It has to refuel ten times in space just to hit the moon. Pretty much, yeah, five to ten times or something. I, I'll run I those numbers that was for Mars. sure. And both they they yeah. actually require the moon actually requires a little bit more propellant, believe it or not, to get to and land on than Mars. Wow! Because you not don't have any that. atmosphere to slow you down. Oh, uh, you have to do all of the propulsive. All of your slow down to touch down softly has to be propulsive. And, and didn't to get Elon from say it was just so gonna to, like fall. Yeah, oh yeah. Well, he, he basically <laughs> said at one point, just said, well, just turn the engines off and let it fall a little bit. Yeah, it's like yeah. well, <laughs> gotta slow legit. down enough that it <laughs> that it doesn't do that. Just but use parachutes. Just use parachutes. Yeah, on the moon. <laughs> but even so, you know, the, getting to the moon, you're really, really close to escape trajectory anyway. Like you're you're really close to that. You can just it's only a little bit more to do escape trajectory, a little bit more to get to Mars. So, I mean, it might not be necessarily more to land on the moon, but it's, like, r almost the same, basically. Hmm. So it's uh, then it is to get similar, to Mars. you would say, right? Very, very, very similar. Way more similar than you'd think, you know, because it seems like one's right there and the other one's, like, this little tiny Super speck far. in the sky. Yeah. Well, and it's got half the gravity, too. Yeah, yeah. Is that half the gravity of Mars, yeah. Of Mars. Yeah. Yep. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this clip from our show. If that's just not enough for you and you want to watch the full episode, you can go to olfpod.com slash YT. And if you want more from us, you can consider becoming a Patreon member. You'll get early access to episodes. You can join our awesome community. You can actually watch us record live and get your name in the credits by going to olfpod.com slash Patreon. So thanks everyone for watching. Check back every Friday for new clips here and new episodes on the main channel. Thanks, everybody.